Welcome to the December 2016 edition of Farsight's Time Cross Project, where we use remote viewing to report the news to you the month before the major news events happen. I'm Courtney Brown, director of the Farsight Institute. Now, what you are watching is the raw news predictions for December 2016. And based on the remote viewing results that you are about to see, December 2016 promises to be an extremely newsworthy month. You are minutes away from seeing what we expect to happen. Now, we are publishing these news reports on the 30th of November, and we publish all of our news reports on the last day of each month, which are raw news predictions for the coming month. But around the 10th of each month, we also publish a brief analysis of how well we did during the previous month. So around December 10th, we will publish our analysis of how well our remote viewers did in reporting the major news events for November 2016. So please try to watch our news analyses as well as the raw news reports each month. That is two separate videos each month for our Time Cross project. It takes us time and effort to sort through all of the necessary information relating to our raw report. So don't just assume that you can see how well we do without listening to our analyses. Remote viewing is more complicated and capable than most people think, and our help in explaining things really is important. If you are new to remote viewing, Know that it is a mental procedure that uses highly structured methodologies that are derivative from those developed by the United States military and used for espionage purposes to perceive, describe, and thus predict major news events. While we could always be wrong, so far, our monthly Time Cross project has been remarkably accurate. Although we did not start this project with this intent, given the significant degree of media manipulation present in today's world, our Time Cross project has become one of the few and truly unbiased news outlets available anywhere. All viewers working on Farsight projects and in the Time Cross experiment do their work totally solo and blind. Since their work is for the future, no one has any idea what the targets will be. We have three remote viewers working this month, Dick Algeyer, Aziz Brown, and Princess Janae. Now, so much appears to be heading our way in December. What good is news that simply tells you what already happened? This is raw news of what we expect to happen, the way you always wanted it the month in advance. Now, we begin with reports by Dick Algeyer, followed with reports by Aziz Brown and Princess Janae. Try to keep an open mind, learn a bit about remote viewing, and then we can all watch the news in December to see how well we did. As I look ahead to a big event in December, I've been thinking about this for a month, knowing I'm going to work this session. And there's something in remote viewing that's called tagging. Tagging is when things come to you out of session. So I know that I'm going to be working this. My feelers are out. My antenna are quivering. I know I'm looking at something in December. So, you know, over the past couple of weeks, a couple of things have come to me, not really in a formal session, but just when I'm quiet or pondering things, things flash into my head. The first, and I want to, I want to put these down. The first one was in the sky, something we see in the sky. Look up a celestial event, uh, an event in the heavens, something that gets our attention, something that a lot of people are going to go, oh, wow, and there will be attention drawn to something in the sky. And I didn't, this didn't come out in my formal session. Uh, I didn't really probe it too much. Just. Uh, celestial event of some note and something that we'll see and will be probably beautiful and might make news. The second thing, um, uh, 
Obama, I know he's kind of supposed to be fading away, but I get a feeling of a document in Obama, something that's uh, not necessarily WikiLeaks, but uh, out of nowhere, a uh, question about something raised about uh, Obama and Obama back in the news and a uh, uh, I think the birth certificate thing's over, but some document that's going to be challenged um, having to do with President Obama. That's two. And finally, uh, the I did this a couple of months ago, the snake eating its tail analogy and uh, financial. I know that uh, as I record this, the stock market is at a record high. I just have a feeling that there's going to be news that uh, something's going to happen with that. So um, that's a more of just a gut feeling than a remote viewing feeling. But I, I keep going back to that the system eating itself, like uh, it feels full right now. Um, it's, at, it's at a high, but it could all uh, crash down and have uh, some bad consequences real soon. And these, these are things that I don't put a 30 day, you know, within November 1 to December 31 time limit. It could be 90 days. So now, for a more formal bit of remote viewing, uh, I task target IKV5-GCH6, and I've been doing some work on that. IKV5-GCH6. City sidewalks, okay, I see buildings. I see tall structures like a city. I see roadways, uh, people on the sidewalk. Um, a pleasant uh, city scene that, and I get smells of uh, a car exhaust cold car exhaust. Now I've I've lived in the tropics for 30 years. I haven't been in a in a uh, cold city. I haven't been in a cold place in, literally in 30 years. But uh, there's a smell that I recall that is on a cold day car exhaust smells different. I get that smell. I get city smells, petroleum, industry, kind of over the a little bit farther away and closer. A lot of smells come to me. Um, uh, candles, can scented candles, uh, soaps, like if you go Christmas shopping in a store and they're selling um, candles that have uh, spicy scents, Christmas scents, uh, cinnamon, spice, floral scents, uh, handmade soaps, that, that kind of a real pleasant smell you get in a store. I get that smell. I get evergreen, like Christmas wreaths. Sounds of traffic, horns, bustling city sounds, uh, buses going by, people talking, people walking, um, traffic, beep, beep, mm, mm, mm. textures, mm, temperatures, geez, uh, hard pavement rock glass textures, uh, temperatures are pretty cool, pretty cold. So that's a bunch of stuff coming it to me initially. And uh, I've got other ways to probe this as I look at it. Looking at the land.
Now that first look looked daytime, but this seems uh, darker. I'm <clears throat> have slipped in time. Hard to draw on a whiteboard, but um, a city skyline, a lot of tall buildings, dense urban area, it's nighttime, the sky is dark, I see twinkling lights, I can see lights on in the, some of the buildings, you know, random floors have lights in them, twinkling red lights on top of the buildings, uh, I can see traffic moving. Um, this is a, a city, a lot of tall buildings, sounds of city sounds, a, a throbbing underlying hum, hum of traffic, of machinery and noise, vibrancy. Um, I smell uh, petroleum and exhaust. Again, that wintertime exhaust smell, though, where it's like you can smell the carbon monoxide when it's cold, like you can't smell it in the summertime. Uh, very uh, cosmopolitan, urban, bustling, uh, busy, a city, so that's my that's my land, Gestalt. More street scenes, buildings sidewalk, buildings, kind of crowded, roadway, uh, <clears throat> and I get a sudden sound of a, uh, a, a sharp boom, a, a thunderclap that echoes throughout the building, a booming thunder, only one sharp boom. Visual for that is an area here where I see blackened, charred, uh, gouged out, um, sound of uh, secondary echo and then splatter, pelting, smells of cordite, cordite like gunpowder, explosive residue, I see like a storefront window, it's a sidewalk. There are people walking along it. Um, it looks like a display window. I see a, there's something that cuts through it that's very colorful, uh, red and purple and white. Um, it has lettering on it, but I can't read the, if I try to read the lettering, it'll knock me off. But I, I get a sense that there are letters on it and it would be uh, something to do with a, a holiday cheer sale, the name of a store, uh, maybe a chain, 
people are walking by this, there's a sidewalk. Here's the sidewalk, here's the road, there's buildings. I see these displays and I see this very colorful thing uh, that's pretty, pretty like a big flamboyant sign. There's something here that's outside and it's, uh, I can't see it clearly. It's like a display or uh, an object. Um, it's, uh, people pass it by and it's, uh, it's an object that's, I sense it's part of the holiday. Um, they're not paying much attention to it. There are people walking by. I see like uh, ladies in um, a hat that's a warm hat with hair coming down, a jacket that's buttoned up and uh, pretty heavy. She's carrying packages. She's with a friend. Her name starts with a C, Celeste, Candy, Cindy, um, Connie, something with C's and E's. The friend's name is a T sound with E's too, like Terry, Tanya, um, Tracy. Uh, they're walking together. She's uh, under stress, but it's good stress. She's uh, got a lot of things to do. She's got things to check off. She's carrying packages, mm, holiday cheer, but she's very busy and she's uh, uh, like go to dinner, go shopping, carry these packages. I got to pick up the kids. Uh, got to go do this and that, and run errands. Other people that are not connected to them. There's okay. There's people walking by on this street scene, and again, I smell. Uh, you know, like there would be wreaths here, that evergreen type of smell, and the smell of uh, in here candles, spicy scents, those good, nice, uh, good memory smells of the holiday season, like, like I said, soap uh, scents. Um, also, the, uh, it feels kind of damp and cool. You can smell the exhaust. You can hear buses going by. And something happens here that It's at ground level, and it's very, uh, like I want to say, shaped charge that suddenly comes out and makes that blasting sound. And then I get this is this is bad. I'm sorry. They're knocked down. They're blown apart. Uh, death, blood, blood on the sidewalk, blood spatters up here, um, body parts, bodies, people knocked down, um, a number of deaths, injuries. This is damaged. There's holes blown in things. There's shrapnel. There's things. It, the walls are pitted. Uh, there's a blackened area. This is sudden and really you know, it seems like a Terror, ISIS, hidden, detonated. And then I get a wider, higher angle.
uh, I see a predominant. Uh, I see predominantly a big tower, a nice tower. Uh, again, this is a cosmopolitan urban area, and I see emergency vehicles. I hear sirens. I hear yelling. I hear a, uh, someone speaking over a bullhorn. There are police lights flashing, uh, fire trucks, paramedics, people milling around, uh, people running back and forth, emergency responders. This is an emergency response. Um, uh, sirens yelping, uh, crowd noise, and a scene of, and I, this may be different than the other, uh, the other thing I drew. This might be another location. You know, I, I see these things as like disjointed images and I, I go in and get them and see it for a couple of seconds, then probe it, and I don't know the, Trying to piece it together in a narrative is, is difficult. Uh, but this is a sidewalk. There's something out front here that's happened where there's an emergency response. And I, I want to draw all the, I see so many different types of people. I see It took me a while to draw. Um, law enforcement officers, responders. I see so many different ones at this target. Okay, I see uh, firefighters in their firefighter hats with uh, bulky, you know, gear with the, they have the fluorescent uh, stripes. And they're, uh, they're coming, they're here. I see uh, men in blue, uh, policemen in blue, dark blue uniforms with sidearms, um, you know, trying to control the scene, uh, standing around, taking control of things. I see policemen with those riot control things, standing in the line, um, uh, having a problem, uh, actually having physical confrontations, I think. Uh, batons, nightsticks, uh, those shields they have over their face, I see those. I see, EMS guys in white uh, uniforms carrying, the, you know, the blood pressure and uh, uh, drugs and uh, stuff to stabilize people. Uh, over here, men in suits that I... Secret Service. Um, just a, like, Every first responder for miles around is uh, converged here to try to control uh, the scene. I just keep seeing flashes in there. Um, these guys are milling around. They're, they're done. They've responded. These guys are keeping control. These guys have an ongoing heart problem with crowd control and keeping the crowd back. They're talking on their little radio and keeping an eye on things and kind of trying to stay out of the way. Um, they've got their own job to do and these just emergency responders all over the place.
I see fighting, rioting, uh, demonstration, people holding signs, people yelling, people extremely agitated. I hear rah, 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 yelling, um, uh, 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 smacking, like fighting, scuffling, shuffling, scratching, scraping sounds. Um, all hell is breaking loose here, a uh, jumbled tangle of humanity losing it. And interestingly, there are people over here that are just onlookers that are, they seem to be somehow uh, safe. There's a barrier or an obstacle or a line of demarcation some way that they're off over here and they're looking at it with kind of like fascinated horror. These people are in a frenzy. They are riotous, losing it, uh, mob mentality type of thing. Uh, and there's more to this. Man, this is like Somebody, a man, uh, grievously wounded. I, I, I see a, a, a actual bleeding flesh, a wound uh, with blood pouring out of it and on the ground, um, not really conscious, kind of inert. People leaning over, people rushing to his aid, people coming, uh, some are standing looking, uh, shock, oh my God, uh, help, uh, render assistance, first aid. Um, <clears throat> just horror, a moment of reaction and then springing into action to try to do what needs to be done, but uh, a wound. Not the merriest Christmas target here. This is like uh, have a very terror Christmas kind of idea of thing. I mean, I hope not. Uh, I hope this doesn't happen, but uh, anything else I need to... All I keep getting is gasping, wheezing, choking, life draining away, uh, doing what they can to try and save him. Uh, but a shocking scene. Hi, my name is Aziz, and today we will be looking at targets 7478, 8416. 
Okay, so it feels like there's a lot of rushing energy. High velocity burst of energy that sort of escalates upwards as well as out. So it's sort of just like a, a burst of energy that's moving up and out in all directions, like a circle. And on this side, it seems we can see that there's sort of a, a subject who is been flung forward outside of the blast. So, let's see if I can give a better picture of this. So here we have a male subject who sort of feels like he has some sort of formal attire, maybe semi-formal. And it seems like he's just had this explosion burst of energy just appear directly behind him, very close behind him. And it just sort of emits and he is sort of flung forward, up and in the air, so he's not on the ground, he's sort of shot a little bit into the air, but mostly pushed forward. And as a result of this, he is just charred and shot in a linear direction. While this burst of energy has most of its force going upwards and outwards. So the outwards force really pushing this subject away while the upward momentum is also carrying him up off the ground slightly. So this male is receiving a bad experience from a high energy blast. The blast doesn't seem to be something like too massive. I mean it's it's a it's definitely a blast that is large for his size proportionally, but it's not like a nuke or anything like that, so it doesn't look like it's that big. More like an urban blast type of thing. Okay, so from a top-down perspective, let me write what I'm seeing. Okay, so... Here is sort of what I got an impression of from a top-down perspective. We have two structures right here, and then sort of a road or pathway, um, and a lot more space on this side, but eventually a longer, wider structure on the other side. It doesn't seem like any of these structures were too high. Let me check. Yeah, I mean, this, this structure looks larger, but I didn't get the feeling that these were like Empire State Building skyscraper-like structures. They were 
low-level structures in what looks like an urban environment where this blast appears and I colored it in blue the first subject that we were looking at in the previous drawing but then I also seem to notice another subject out here on this side of the blast almost perpendicular to this guy so I have a feeling of another subject over here but it's not as strong and as easy to make this person out if he is a person or she so here is this blast and you can see the arrows going in all directions that's the force of this blast really just emanating outwards as well as up because there seems to be a large smoke tower just shooting up off of this like straight up but there's a lot of outwards force so So moving down to sort of get a perspective of the environment that we're around, it does seem like this is an urban area, but it also seems like this blast is visible from quite a big distance down the street. So the image that I'm getting when moving further down the street is sort of like... Okay, so looking down the street, it looks like there are structures lining the sides of the street, like an urban area. It seems like there's vehicles, it just seems like a normal urban area. But there seems to be this blast way down the street that is shooting up this tower of smoky, opaque, blackish-gray stuff. So, this is just shooting up very rapidly. And in particular, from my perspective when looking at this, I see this male subject right here, this one. And this person is sort of, has their hand to their face, almost like there's a cell phone and they're turning very rapidly at the sound and the suddenness of this event right here. So they seem like they're going the opposite direction. They notice the, what's going on, the blast. They're, they seem like they're going the opposite direction. They notice what's going on, the blast, and then they turn very quickly, and that's why they have this arrow curving around. So... That's what seems to be going on with that gentleman. Um, all right, let's move upwards and see more of the environment that we're looking at. Okay, so I get this. I get this feeling like there's water pathways throughout this urban area. So let me draw that out. Okay, so here you can see that there is an urban area. It seems like there's these water pathways in between, but there's also urban area on the opposite banks of these water areas. There also seems to be on this piece of urban area, there seems to be this large structure here 
large structures and more large structures on that side that are larger than the in-between smaller middle structures. So on the other islands or land masses, uh, I'm not sure if they're islands or not, but on the other banks, it seems like there are also large structures, but here in particular, I noticed to see in the middle some large to medium sized structures on these sort of sandwiching sides. There seems to be very tall structures more on this side than on that side. Um, here is where the blast is, right here. And this sort of just makes the plume of smoke that is just rising out of the area. And that is sort of to give you a perspective of the environment that it looks like I'm based in right now. Looking at the subjects themselves that are experiencing this blast, it sort of seems to me that... Let's go through time here. Okay. So, let's make T1 1 minute and then t3 will put 30 seconds let's move around one minute in the past and 30 seconds in front of the incident and anything that we experience in between those two time periods i'll try to write it down for you Okay, so the sort of feeling that I'm getting is let's draw like I said, like a comic book about it. So oh. maybe not like a comic book. I'll just try to draw it the best I can. Okay, so it seems like there's this guy, we'll call him Subject 3, Subject 1, Subject 2. Subject 1 and Subject 2, I do not know if Subject 1 and Subject 2 have anything to do with each other, they just seemed like they're both going in a similar direction at a calm to moderate walking pace. They could be walking a little faster, Subject 1 seems like he's in a little bit more of a hurry, but they're not running, they're walking. Subject 3, on the other hand, is in a full-on sprint. He is running. Subject 3 is going in this direction, sort of almost perpendicular, but sort of diagonal at subject 1 and 2. And this is prior to the blast. Just a couple seconds. I wrote a little notch right here. Maybe this is just a couple seconds before the blast. When subject 3 gets to be in this vicinity of being closer to subject 1 and 2, then at that point, that is when I see this huge blast of energy that just rises out of the area. Subject 1 is then hurled forward Subject 2 looks like Subject 2 was sort of shot to the side, and when Subject 2 fell to the side, Subject 1 went forward. Subject 3, I'm a little confused about what happens to Subject 3. So let me investigate that. I can't really make out what the perceptions are, so I'll just do my best. So it seems like 
when I first described the blast, there was a subject that almost didn't look like a subject. But it felt like maybe this is a subject. I don't know if that subject was the de destroyed body of somebody else, maybe subject three. But I also had a feeling that there was another subject at the time of the blast that sort of stumbled and fell on the ground when the blast happened in front of them. And it looked like this person was in sort of the similar direction as subject three. Then afterwards, this person gets up and goes away, just runs the other direction. So at this point, subject one and two are just sort of charred, burnt, motionless bodies. They kind of looked like they were dead. So, so, going into Subject 3's mind, Subject 3 feels like he's really worried. Worried. In a hurry. Sort of got a shadow beard type of thing going on, but he's worried, he's in a hurry, and he's going, really going. And he's not in the same formal attire as Subject 1 and Subject 2 seem to have. Subject 1 and Subject 2 seem to be semi-formal to formal. They're not wearing the same thing, but they're similarly dressed in terms of their level of formality. Subject 3 does not seem very formal. He's really rushing. He's worried. He's nervous. He sort of just feels like he's got to go do something. But then this blast happens, and he, he, he kind of just seems like he's blank. Like his mind just goes blank at the time. I feel like at some point, Subject 3 maybe tossed something, and that might have been the explosive thing that happened. But that tossing motion might also be just his hands moving out in front of him as he's falling down. So I can't really say for sure. But either way, Subject 3 is easily more stressed out before the event and equally stressed out after the event. So Subject 3 is an interesting subject. So, um... Subject one, the man who seems to have died in the blast, he just looks burnt. He, the blast happened here. He's forward just on the ground by T3, 30 seconds after the event. He is just on the ground, face down, just sort of looks dead. And it looks like the back of him, like his side of his face and everything, he just looks burnt. And subject two just doesn't look that different, just more shot that way instead of that way. So that's what happened to both of them. They do not look alive. Um, and if I had to summarize, I would say that this is a target about a medium to small sized bomb or explosion that blew up in an urban area and killed multiple subjects and disturbed some part of urban life. So... One more thing about the target, I did feel like I should mention it. It did feel like this was not a military type of thing. It felt like it was more of a social disturbance. It sort of felt like it was anti-establishment, social anger, just being let out in destructive ways. So I, social anger, anti-establishment, 
it just some it just seemed like that was this was more of a social outcry by radical few than something that was more of a coordinated military strike. So I did not feel like this was that. So yeah. That concludes the target. Hi, now we will be looking at target 071124291249. I'm getting a lot of circling energy. Feeling like circle energy, sort of just feels like there's debris, little particles of large and small objects flying in this energy. Yeah, so it feels like there's a lot of this high intensity fast moving pushing energy that is circling but on not a small scale like a large scale of circling energy that's moving outwards but sort of torrential tumultuous energy All right, so I, I noticed these angular structures in the distance. They kind of seem like they're maybe urban. And this sort of angular structure over here, it's closer to me. I feel like there's a lot of wetness, but there's feelings of hardness. So, hard and wet. So, maybe the feeling of like rain or something like that, but it seems like there's this dark cloud dynamics going on. So, just all this cloud dynamics, but it also seems like there is this window of light shining down onto this angular structure that looks sort of like an urban area. So, yeah, sort of like a window of light, these angular structures that have sort of this downwards window of light, but this force that's just shooting out, and it's just shooting out. And it's weird because it kind of feels like this is a, a late season hurricane or something like that, but... It's weird because hurricane season doesn't usually go into December, so this is sort of a strange feeling that I'm getting, and I don't want to deduct that it's a hurricane, because seasonally, it, hurricanes don't usually happen that late in the year. So, I'm just getting a lot of energy that's similar to a hurricane, where an urban area is present, and there is a lot of wetness in the area. Now I'm also getting this sort of feeling that within a body of water, maybe this is nearby. Let me just draw it out and then I'll explain. Within a body of water, it seems like there is this object over here and then there's this other object that's here. This object seems like it's submerged at least halfway inside the water, while this object over here does not seem submerged, but it does seem like it is a location that has a lot of energy spewing out of it. So, just sort of a burst of energy going up. 
It kind of seems like this is something like a submarine that shot a torpedo at this boat. But at the other same time, it seems like I'm feeling a lot of this cyclical circling energy that moves around. Let's see if I can move downwards a little bit, just to somewhere between here and 50 feet. So the closer I am towards this area inside the water, I kind of feel like I'm also feeling this sort of current pushing me and just pushing me outwards. But it also feels like on a larger scale that the current is also circling motion. It doesn't seem linear. It's not sort of like a bomb blast where I would just get shot in one direction. It sort of feels like in this area, I'm sort of being tossed and turned, like being underwater, being caught in a big wave or something like that. So I'm still unsure whether this is a natural phenomena or something military-like that is happening between this object and that object, like a submarine hitting this thing with a torpedo. Looking at this, I feel like there are multiple levels inside of it and let's look in here yeah so it's i get the feeling that there is like a subject inside of here multiple subjects working with gizmos and gadgets and stuff like that but on this craft of object i feel like i'm feeling a lot more of destruction like uh subjects being tossed and turned and stuff. They're not calm like these subject, subjects are. I mean, these subjects don't feel like they're calm, but these subjects aren't in immediate peril. These ones seem like they more so are, but... Then again, I don't know if this is like an event that's happening in conjunction to the high energy that's floating through the air and the water around these places that could be affecting an urban area simultaneously with a coastal seafaring area, but it's unclear whether or not this is a military catalyzed operation or if it is something that is just a natural phenomena where there happens to be military craft that, or just seafaring craft that just happen to be in that place at that time. I don't have a direct feeling like these military are actually causing these types of high energy scenarios. So it is a little confusing to me. I guess this is one of those things that only time can tell what we're looking at here for sure. So. So to look at the through time at what I felt with the urban part of this target. Um, let's do 24 hours. So, 24 hours, let's go. Okay, so if I had to divide it up, T1, 24 hours in the past. So what I'm seeing here is sort of it looks like you got T1, 24 hours in the past. It looks like there's just some minor cloud dynamics and an urban area in the, in the vicinity. And it seems like there's not too much high energy situations going on. But in T2, it seems like that's where I was seeing the light come down from the clouds. A lot of energy being pushed around. Then in T3, I sort of just felt like my vision was being blocked it just seemed like opaque 
the environment in front of me. It's not that the subject, the structures are gone. I'm not saying that because I did see evidence of structures in places that I was able to see through. But it's sort of seemed like, you know, it sort of seemed like there was this sort of just blocking of vision just like a like a fog or a cloud that's covering it so let's try to see where it comes in well it just seems like the fact that i can't see much in t3 is related to the fact that there's all this energy coming down in t2 so that's that but if I had to say, I feel like in the area that's around T1, 2, and 3, there is somewhere a coastal area or something related to the amount of energy and rain that looks like is flying around this area that makes me feel like there's water. And maybe the objects that I feel like are submerged in the water, that's something that's off in the distance, off at a coast, but it's still affected by the same body of energy that seems to be affecting simultaneously this urban area as well as something in the ocean or water or body of liquid. So... This is a slightly confusing target for me to decipher. I can only pass on these sort of perceptions with it. But with that feeling, I would say that uh, I saw that there was this... I saw that there was this um, in-the-water portion of it with the submerged, submerged craft. Let's call it Object 1. I did feel like I saw something else moving in the water. And... See if I can go back there. Yeah, I felt like there was something else moving in the water that went off in this direction, sort of towards the other ocean-like structure that was... made me first think, is that a torpedo or something like that? Maybe it was just something moving, maybe it was a fish or something like that, but it seemed like... It was a hard projectile that was just moving. So I'm not quite sure if this is a military-style submarine torpedoing attack that happened on a stormy day, or if this was just a natural phenomena. There just happened to be ships and a submarine type of thing there at the time. So a little confused by this target, but... Whether or not the events for target 07112429 are related, the ones that I perceived in the target, maybe they just happened in a similar time period. It is unsure. I'm unsure whether or not those two events, the storm-looking event and the watercraft-looking event, are related or in the same vicinity. So only time can tell. There's a a lot going on in this in this target. I'm getting a lot of, of land, large, large city. Um, I'm getting a lot of people, a lot of subjects, a lot of uh, a lot of commotion, a lot of man-made smells. I got some water. Um, fire, burning, a lot of cloud dynamics, a lot of, a lot, there's, there's a lot going on in this target. Um, 
we see that there's people that are folk they're they're scattered everywhere they're they're focused but not they have a they all have something in common but they still seem very scatterbrained and scattered everywhere um lots of movement there's a lot of wind and shouting and uh lights, um, a lot of energy, bright lights. It's, it's kind of disastrous. Everything's kind of falling apart. Um, let me see if I can, they, uh, it's a very, let me erase this real quick. Put a dot to prove. It's a, uh, very large city, kind of, got a road here. Very large city. The city's almost um, in a circular shape, like there's different things going on, a circular grid, if that's possible. Um, there's a road that leads. You have a lot of steep peaks. Um, 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 they don't feel like mountains, though. They feel very man-made. So I'm assuming it's part of a building this big. I'm assuming that it's part of a building here. Um, I'm not sure what that is. You got very tall structures here um, some foliage going on subjects in different places um, what is that I'm not sure you have a couple of things going on here I'm gonna draw it to the Best of my ability. Um, road leading in and out of the cities, what it feels like is, is, or whatever this is. There's a smaller city, um, or a larger city, I guess, off in the distance over here. You got, you can definitely see that it's a city back there. It's, um, you can see a bridge, kind of like going in. Um, it seems to be over a body of water. Let me Not a big body, maybe like a bay or of some sort. It's not like an ocean. Uh, that I can tell right now anyways but there's this bridge um, rather large going over over this I guess that looks like a bridge bridge um, going over this large body of water or it's not super large though but it's big enough to be seen um, you've got uh, I've seen I'm seeing a large set of train tracks or tracks of some sort um, seemingly taking up a lot of space here. Um, not necessarily sure where it's leading or going or what it has to do with any of this. That's a road.
it's coming to me very clearly I'm assuming it's very important Let me see. It's kind of going into it though, not around it. But The city seems to be surrounding the train, or the train tracks seem to be going around the city. Um, I don't necessarily see a train on it. I'm not necessarily seeing anything on it right now, actually. My lines are not the straightest, <laughs> um, but you catch it. The, the, there's all of this going on right now that I'm seeing. Um, to the, There's smoke going around in the city or cloudiness. Um, I'm not sure how close these things are together. Very cloudy, very uh, dark. Very, uh, I'm gonna use just a different dark color so you can see the contrast. Very dark, very cloudy, very, um, smoky or of some sort surrounding the central area. I'm guessing surrounding the central area. It's just dark, dusty, fire burning, um, People are, are dirty. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people, a whole lot of people here going on. Some are what appears to be hurt. Tons of chaos, tons of energy, tons of chaos and energy and, and commotion and, 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 and people are, there's a giant, we're going to say that this is the center of the city and there's this giant metal thing that lands in the center, the whole, the whole center of the city over here um it is disturbing i'm not quite sure what it is people are digging and pulling people from this metal thing um people seem to be inside it as well or underneath it i can't quite tell but i know that it's got a lot to do with with that um this i'm gonna go more into draw a timeline into time and kind of see if I can see how that got there or what it is. It, it was, it wasn't, it kind of flew in, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be flying. It seems that there was a lot of, a lot of wind or of some sort or, or something spinning out of control. I'm not sure if it's this or wind, but it's spinning out of control very fast, hot heat. Um, 
and it kind of just lands very, it's very unplanned it's flying. I don't think it's supposed to be flying or landing right here. Um, deaths occur. Um, it just kind of lands unexpectedly into the city and, and it, it causes all this chaos. It, um, duh, it, 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 what is that? That is, I can't tell if it's a train considering the tracks or if it's an airplane. I just know it's big, it's bulky. Um, deaths have occurred because of this thing. You, you people, I'm going to go into the mindsets mindset of the people here see if I can depict what's going on a lot of them are they, they seem to be searching they seem to uh, things and loved ones have gone missing or they're looking for them um, they're scared they're some of some are hurt it all it's like all of this commotion very it's a lot commotion happens so fast some buildings are broken um, broken buildings broken broken roads or bro broken a lot of things are broken they're breaking um have been torn up to pieces there are debris everywhere um a lot of debris on the ground especially around this thing there's a lot of a lot of um People are running, people are, people are pulling. They're trying to get to safety. They're trying to find help, find shelter. They seem to be, it's like people saw this, whatever happening at the very last minute. They couldn't, they couldn't uh, get out the way or figure out what to do next. They were very unprepared. It all happened so fast is what it's seeming and feeling like. Um, when this thing fell from the sky, I'm not sure if the disaster, if this object caused the disaster or if it's just dealing with it. It's definitely associated with the event. Um, this, it was, um, it's definitely associated with it. Uh, this could be a natural disaster or a man-made event. I can't quite tell because of all the wind, all the smoke and heat and fire and um, going on here in the city, all the chaos. Uh, it's definitely, the city looks like a tornado just ambushed it and did not care at all. Like it demolished the town, but I'm not saying it's a tornado. I can't sense or see a tornado or anything, but it's what a city would look like after a tornado um it's it's very this doesn't seem terroristic it doesn't it doesn't feel like like a um, military event it doesn't feel like someone's planned to do this it doesn't feel terroristic at all I just know that this city is at dismay. It is chaotic. It is, it is broken. It's dark. It's scary. It's smoky. It's filled with fear. Um, it's it's very, it's very sad. The emotion is filled with emotion. It's very it's filled with a lot of things just falling apart. Things just. It's just falling apart. It's it's breaking. It's sad. I wish there were. <sighs> I'm not sure again what the metal object is. If it's a train or a plane, I know it was coming from the sky. I don't think it's supposed to be coming from the sky. Uh, water is rising. I guess a lot of shaking up a bit. Um, it's just very, very bad. Very, very bad. So that is the news for December 2016, brought to you at the end of November 2016. Now, thousands of people are watching our monthly editions of our Time Cross Project, but 
We at Farsight have also used remote viewing in many of our mysteries projects, where we have covered topics as diverse as the 9-11 attacks, the JFK assassination, and the psychology of Adolf Hitler, as well as topics involving UFOs and extraterrestrial life. You will be happy to hear that we have just begun a new mysteries project, and we will publish that in early 2017. You can hear updates on how that is going in our vlogs that we publish twice a week. Remember that we have two YouTube channels. Farsight Press is our science YouTube channel, and Farsight Prime is our vlogging YouTube channel. The vlog videos are also short, often less than four minutes each, and to the point, which makes them great to watch on mobile devices. The subscribe links to both of our YouTube channels are in the description area below this video. So, now let's watch the news for December and see how well we did with our remote viewing news perceptions. Remember, we do not pick the targets. We just report them the month before they happen. Also remember to follow our news analysis table on our website in the time cross area to see which news events are the highest ranked, all updated daily. And again, so far, the results of our Time Cross project have been remarkably accurate. It is one of the most interesting remote viewing science projects ever attempted. Also, I hope you watch some or all of our mysteries projects, projects that contain full remote viewing investigations into some of the most intriguing mysteries on Earth and not on Earth. With these mysteries projects, our remote viewers do a number of sessions for each project, all recorded live on video, allowing them to sort out all types of details while answering all or most of the major questions for each of these mysteries. Remember also that our Time Cross project is free for you to watch, but it is not free for us to produce. It costs us a few thousand dollars each month to do this, so your help by watching our mysteries projects is the only thing that pays the bills. Again, remember to look for our analysis video that we will publish around the 10th of December that shows how we did for November. And right now, please subscribe and like. Hey, and stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. <laughs> Be there now.